edition of the video podcast on Geekazine.com. My name is Jeffrey Powers. How y'all doing? This is the first time you're watching one of these videos. Thank you for watching. I hope you come back next week. Check out the weeks past. And we've got a lot of great stuff. This week we're going to focus on a couple things here. Uh, basically data extraction. I have a friend, this computer, if you should notice my Apple's not here. I've, I've, I put a, a different computer into place. This is uh, my friend's computer. The hard drive decided to stop functioning. <laughs> so what I've been doing is I've been pulling it apart and I put in a brand new hard drive, just loaded up an operating system. But I figured since I had the hard drive or, or the whole machine apart, what people do call the hard drive sometimes, or the box, um, since I had it apart, I thought I'd... Uh, I thought I'd show you a couple things inside the PC so you can get an understanding of what's inside there. We're going to do a little close-up. I'll show you about the processor. I'll show you the memory. I'll show you the hard drives and all that other good stuff. Then we're going to talk about a nice little useful tool that you can use when you just want to pull out the hard drive, like this one, and hook it up to a computer like a, like a USB drive. So two parts. Double the f pleasure, double the fun, I guess you can call it. <laughs> so let's get started, and here we go. This is going to be the inside of the PC. You know, we're going to show you everything. All right, what we have here is the inner workings of the PC. As you can see, there's a lot of cables <laughs> here. And we're going we're gonna to point them out really quick. First of all, we've got the processor, which, of course, you're not seeing the processor. You're seeing the heat sink and the fan, which is on top of the processor. This is what keeps the processor cool. A heat sink, this is the video processor, it's also got a heat sink on it. Did you notice it's got like a little ridged metal on there? The way that it's designed is actually a better way to disperse the heat. What will happen is the processor will get hot, it'll push the heat into this into this metal, and uh, and the metal will will disperse it, and so it won't get as hot. So Moving on, we've got over here we've got the memory. We've got two place to put two sticks of memory. We've got one stick of memory in here. One's a 512 uh, so a meg memory module. Of course, we could put another one in if we wanted to. Over here, these cables are for the hard drive and the CD-ROM and the floppy, which, of course, we don't have a floppy uh, drive here, so it is completely empty. I don't know if you can see that or not, but anyway. Uh, they hook up to these cords. Of course, the cords go to the hard drive and then the CD-ROM or DVD. Now, when you're hooking up more peripherals, what you want to keep in mind is if you have a cable that goes to the hard drive and then the secondary, try not to hook that up to the CD-ROM because all of a sudden you're putting two devices on, one that works slower than the other one, and this, this cable will go as fast as its slowest connection. So therefore, what you'd want to do is you want to take the secondary connection, if you have one, um, on the on the motherboard and hook that up to the CD-ROMs and this one up to the hard drives. Floppies, there is no floppy on here. There is a card reader, which is what this black cable is right here. So that and that hooks up to straight to the motherboard. Now, we've got uh, as you can see right here. I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. You got some copper wiring that that's sticking out here. That's that's where the main juice is coming from, and uh, of course that's going through the power supply, which is up here. And we've talked about the power supply in a previous episode, and what type of power supply supply you should get uh, if you need to replace your power supply, or if you're adding peripherals to it. Of course, the power supply has this nice, lovely conglomerate of colored cables which then hook up to the motherboard. There's two, in this case, there's two hookups to the motherboard. This one, which is the main hookup, and then this one, which is to the fan of the pro and the processor. Um, you have the little peripheral hookups. This one would be for a floppy drive or a smaller device. This one would be for a hard drive. You normally use these plugs instead of these plugs, uh, P9 plugs, I guess is what they're called. And these are P4 plugs. So you'd hook that up to here. This would, like I said, floppy drive. Maybe sometimes a card. Sometimes a card. So what we have here are PCI slots, which is where you can add extra stuff. Now, there's a modem hooked up in here. You can also put in a network card. You can put in a sound card. You can put in some other stuff. Now, a lot of this stuff is actually hooked up on the board. Like I said, the video is right here. 
there's a place where you could have the, the the manufacturer could have put an AGP card in, but they decided that it's doing onboard video. That's what they're going to stick with. So they didn't put that little device there, so you can actually see the the, the spot where it goes. But uh, video card, it's got onboard sound and it's got the the printer cable on the side here. Let's pull it here. You can see the network card. Uh, it's printer, video, and of course the keyboard and mouse up here. Other than that, we've got, you get little chips. Oh, one more thing that we want to talk about, and that's right here. This is actually a really simple fix. If you turn on, off your computer and turn it back on, or unplug your computer and plug it back in, and all of a sudden the date reverts back to like 1969, this is what you'd want to replace. It is the computer's battery. Now, sometimes it's a watch battery. Sometimes it's a, especially in IBMs, it would be something different. And you can go over to the battery shop and get it. Now, this one, you can go over to your local store. It's uh, The number is CR2032. And you just replace this watch battery, and all of a sudden, when you unplug your PC and plug it back in, it will not revert back to 1969. Two things to keep in mind when you open up your PC. First of all, always unplug it. Plug is right here. When you unplug it, there's still when you, if you have it plugged in, there's still power running through this PC. So unplugging it will start to drain the power. You hit the, the on switch, and that'll drain as much power as possible. Secondly, if you, especially if you're, you're trying to uh, put in a new component like a sound card, touch the side. If you have a static charge, the uh, static charge could get onto the, to the machine and, and ruin the machine. Not as much so as it used to be, but it's still prevalent. So always touch the side of the machine, get rid of any static charge that you have built up, and then go ahead and put in your memory, put in let's your... Say, uh, let's card. say you have a PC like this, and you have your regular PC, and let's say the hard drive died, and you don't have a replacement hard drive, but you want to pull as much data off this hard drive as possible, as quick as possible. Well, there's a nice little device here, and many different companies overseas make them, it is what is called the hard drive to USB connector. Now what this is, this is the uh, connector for the hard drive. I can hook up a regular IDE hard drive, I can hook up a notebook hard drive, or I can hook up any type of SATA hard drive. It hooks up on this side and goes into your USB port. It has a power unit to it. And I have two converters. These are the SATA drive con uh, converter cables. Now, what I would do, in this case, this is an IDE hard drive. What I would do is I would take the IDE cable and I'd plug it into the hard drive. I'd take the power end and I'd plug it into the power end. Now, this is, this is the real trick. Right here is a set of pins right in the middle there. And what these pins are is what tells the, the hard drive if it's the main hard drive or the secondary, what's also called a master or a slave. Now, the pin configurations are usually written on the hard drive. Sometimes they're not. And if you need to fix that, if you need to uh, find that out, you can always look up the model number online, and it'll tell you the pin configurations. Try and set it to master, which is usually, in this case, has no pins in the, uh, in the configuration. You pull out any jumpers. You can use like a tweezers, or you can use a small, small screwdriver to pull up the uh, pull up the jumper and pull it out. Keep it aside. It's a very small item. You can lose it really quick. So, but we hooked up the IDE, hooked up the power, we plug the power into the power cord, and the hard drive will start to spin. We then hook up the ID or the uh, USB part into the computer, and then it should start detecting the hard drive. The only time it doesn't detect a hard drive if the hard drive is, is not functioning anymore. My name is Jeffrey Powers, and this is the Geekazine video podcast for this week. I encourage you to come to geekazine.com to get all your information. We do an audio, po audio podcast on Wednesday, video podcast on Thursday, a weekly roundup on Friday, and a weekly focus on Monday.